The Uncharted Territories is a podcast about seeing the unseen in the world of matter. Join me, Shara Prophet, the Mind Magic Coach, and my partner, astrologer Scott Tajirian, as we take an esoteric look this season into the life, death, and afterlife of a variety of celebrities and public figures who lost their lives prematurely or unexpectedly. All right, welcome to the Uncharted Territories. I'm Scott Tajarian, an astrologer, here with the amazing Shara Prophet. Who are you, Shara? Let's, <laughs> let's remind our listeners who you are. Who am I? Yeah, who are you? This is such a profound question. Yes. I am Shara Prophet, and I am a certified hypnotherapist and medium. Amazing. And mm-hmm. so you've you've been a medium with our current subject that we were speaking about on our last episode, Margaret. Yes. The Princess of England. Very fascinating individual. I'd say so. Yes. <laughs> so let's recap a little bit what we were talking about last time. Okay. Last time we got into the subject of sex. Yeah. Remember? She she came out the gate. She was like, let's <laughs> talk about sex. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> let's get right into it. Sure. <laughs> well, her reasoning for that was to touch on the the family, mm-hmm. you know, and society too. Not mm-hmm. just the royal family, but the, but society as a whole, how we do not talk about sex enough, especially with children and as children and how that suppression really like overflows into the rest of your life. And it, it causes you not to be able to express yourself in a way that is healthy Mm. and, you know, holding back all of these emotions and, and being told to squelch your natural sexual tendencies and desires can really wreak havoc in your life, as we've seen, you know, with a lot of these royals mm-hmm. and in and and people that we know too, you know, normal people. <laughs> totally. I, well that's the thing. Like the royals We're all the are, same. Exactly. Yeah. We're all the same. Mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. different titles and statuses and bank accounts, pretty much. Yes. That's so, it. So it's suppressed in us in the same way that it's suppressed in them. Mm-hmm. If you if you come from a family that doesn't talk about that mm-hmm. stuff or makes you feel dirty, mm-hmm. then yeah. You know, it can it can turn into a dysfunction. Yes. So that is what her reasoning was for bringing that up and really talking about children and sexuality too, which is something that is a very taboo subject. A lot of people don't want to put those two things in the same category. Is it because like, then it's like you're getting into pedophilia? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But that's not what she was. That's not what she's talking about. That's not how she was talking about it. So reiterate what, what she was talking about. She's not talking about pedophilia and having sex with children. No. She's talking about what? She's talking about how sexuality is expressed in the very early phases of childhood. But childhood, she said that childhood is an expression of sexuality when you're born. Because of sex, we're born naked. We're born with the sensations, right? Mm-hmm. From the mother breastfeeding and, mm. and, and, and all of that stuff. I mean, if you talk to a mother who has breastfed, there are sensations that happen while breastfeeding the child, mm. right? But those are things that are very taboo mm. and like icky and nasty instead of just a, her, her whole thing is let's address it. Let's talk about those things. Children are naturally sexual. I mean, I've been around children that like, you know, when I was a girl, a little girl, I used to pull my dress up. You know what I mean? Yes, totally. I used to pull my dress up. I used to hump my pillow because it felt good. Yeah. 
But thankfully, like my mother would never was like, that's bad. You're no, doing something totally. bad. She was just like, oh, what are you doing? And I was like, this feels good. Well, I, I have a little story. It's like I, I was hanging out with my two nephews and just in the bed watching cartoons. Mm -hmm. And the younger one, who is like six at the time, pulled out his penis mm -hmm. and was like, Uncle Scotty, look. Oh <laughs> I was like, okay, yeah. <laughs> You're like, I'm leaving I, now. <laughs> I see you. Okay, that's great. You know, you have one of those things. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I didn't make a big deal out no, of it. No, you know, it's and just, you shouldn't. Yeah, exactly. It's their bodies. Yeah. They're, they're getting they're to know their body. They're yeah, discovering. Exactly. You know, I, one of my girlfriends, when her son was really, really young, I had on a skirt and he laid down and rolled like enough Underneath to see yeah. up my skirt. Mm -hmm. And he was like three. Yeah. And I was like, what are you doing? Yeah. And he just started like he, he, he laughing. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> but at that young age, he's a boy mm -hmm. and he's, well, he doesn't understand, mm -hmm. but he's exploring, yes. you know, and curious. Um, and curious. Mm -hmm. So what she, so what Princess Margaret is saying is that in some families, when children express themselves that way, they're made to feel like they've done something wrong, their bodies are wrong, they're dirty. And so what that can do to the psychology mm -hmm. of a really young mind that is super suggestible, right? Mm -hmm. Because from the ages of zero to about nine years old, you are in a perpetual state of hypnosis, which mm -hmm. means everything that you're told or you Wet are exposed to, you soak it up yeah. as truth and it becomes a or part a of your program. It gets uh, wet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You become, that becomes a part of your personality. You're a wet piece of clay. That's exactly. what it is. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's why with my nephew, I wasn't like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. don't do that. I was like, okay, dude. Yeah. <laughs> you have a penis. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that, you're a boy. You have yeah, exactly. one. Exactly. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. So that was the summary of what we, we talked about last time. And then she went on to say that we wonder why there are serial killers and murderers and why psychopaths exist mm -hmm. because they're not allowed to express themselves. Right. Not necessarily sexually. And that sexual expression, it doesn't always mean that, it doesn't mean having sex. Mm -hmm. It means mm -hmm. your, it's your behavior. Yes. Because in, uh, in, in the Capucinian hypnosis method, he has a concept called the emotional, physical, sexual and it has nothing to do with sex. Hmm. It's your behavior. Mm -hmm. It's how you present yourself to the world. Yes. However, when we we somehow separate sex from everything else that we do in mm -hmm. our day to day mm -hmm. <laughs> lives, for some reason that's mm -hmm. private and we don't talk about that. And she's saying if it was more of a natural conversation, yeah, in the family. With the the kids, not talking about positions and things, you know what mm -hmm. I mean. But yeah. if it was more of an of a natural conversation, that we, we would probably cut down on a lot of the dysfunction because it's pr it's suppressed. It's suppressed, and so it comes out in a violent way. Absolutely, and you know it's it's suppressing creativity. Mm -hmm. Like I I, re I have a distinct memory when when I was a kid. I don't know how old I was. I was maybe eight or nine and mm. I was learning to play the piano and I was like writing my own song. And I remember I got an erection. Yeah. You know, it yeah. was like I was aroused by this creation mm -hmm. that I was doing. So mm -hmm. it's connected. Well, you know, when you think about the Big Bang, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that's really, that's what it is. It's an orgasm. Yes. Okay. Yes. The orgasm brings you closer to death mm -hmm. actually, right? Yes. And all of that's creation. Of course, sex can create a life mm -hmm. and death is also a form of creation because even though you're leaving out of this body, you're not done, no. right? You're no. being birthed 
into, into something else. a new realm, a new reality, mm-hmm. a new, you know, experience. Yes. So of course you would get an erection if you were being creative. Mm-hmm. That's the seed of creation. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. And it's nothing wrong with that. No. <laughs> it's only when we force it on other people or we harm another person. And that usually comes from, from being suppressed suppression. in the creativity, exactly. in the sexuality. That's Absolutely. the whole point. Absolutely. Yeah. Or And then if you were abused by someone, right? And maybe that was ignored. Mm-hmm. You know, I've seen that happen with a lot of people, with the clients. You know, they come and they're like... The abuse was ignored. Yeah, exactly. No one did anything. Yeah. And now they have issues yes. sexually. Yes. They, they can't, they're not comfortable in their bodies. Yes. It's affecting their relationship. Well, their creativity was subjugated it mm-hmm. was it was snuffed out in a sense yeah. you know it wasn't nurtured yeah. if somebody is sexually abusing a child mm-hmm. they are suppressing them they are it's it's distorted it, it's distorting it's everything. a distortion yes. distorted sexuality mm-hmm. absolutely and it's so it's not nurturing no it isn't yeah no it isn't and so i'm just so grateful that we get to talk to these spirits mm-hmm. because they bring such a, a, a wealth of information and mm-hmm. knowledge on a deeper level. I mean, we would not have had this conversation, just the two of us, you know, mm-hmm. maybe no. we would have, but yeah. I don't know. But I mean, <laughs> we have deep conversations. We, yeah. But like, yeah. I don't know if this would have been one. You know <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't imagine saying? like, yeah, you, you, you and I driving in the car and you're like, Scott, let's talk about sex. <laughs> yeah. and I'm like, what? <laughs> no, we, this wouldn't have come up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But being, you know, tapping into her energy she's like let's talk about sex Mm -hmm. because i think that this was um and if we think about her life Mm -hmm. right she was like the royal sexy kitten right oh yeah (laughs) totally of course yeah she would want (laughs) to and that's how i thought she was going to talk about it but she went deep Mm -hmm. you know she went super deep and i was like okay this is a whole nother layer to this but it it gives us a lot of insight into and we've been studying this family Mm -hmm. you know quite extensively but it does give us some insight into their lives how Mm -hmm. they interact with each other the coldness and the not saying that there was no love there but it there's just this very like stoicness about the energy within the family they have to put up a front yeah and you know they call themselves the firm Mm -hmm. and firm Mm -hmm. is hard yeah it's not soft yeah it's not flowing Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know Mm -hmm. it is not moving Mm-hmm. And that is that front that they put out. But, you know, in looking at her astrology, I mean, everything that you're saying here is just like popping off the page because her Venus, which is the planet of love, mm-hmm. was in Libra, which is the sign that Venus rules, the sign of relationships in the seventh house, which is also ruled by Venus. Mm-hmm. It's the the house that Venus rules. It's associated with the seventh sign, which is Libra. So it's like a double, double Libra energy mm-hmm. with Venus. So love and relationship and, and the senses, that's what Venus is about. It rules the five physical senses. It's the planet of sensuality. Mm-hmm. So it's in this position of power being in the sign and the house that it rules. But it's also in opposition to... Uranus, which is like the same symbol as Venus, but you flip it upside down and you add a crescent of receptivity on either side of the cross of matter. Mm -hmm. And that symbolizes what makes your senses unique to you, what makes you a freak, so to speak, because you're different than everyone else. And so she has this planet in opposition to her Venus, and it's in the first house, which is the house of personality. It's in Aries, self-confidence, courage. This is why she was rebellious just as a person. Mm -hmm. She was like the rebel of the royal family. 
And she was also somewhat rebellious in relationships. She, her relationships were very unique. They were different. They were not of the norm. She dated men who were older than her. Mm. She was in relationships with men that were much younger than her. It was not your white picket fence, normal sort of life. Right. You can see why she would have a different take mm -hmm. on sensuality and the senses. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so this was pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Princess Margaret, for yes. tuning us into that. <laughs> so hopefully that is helpful for someone. So yes. I mean, she doesn't. I think it's some great wisdom. Absolutely, right there. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, they they don't bring. When I say they, I mean the people that we or the spirits that we tap into. They don't just bring this stuff up for no reason. They're talking to somebody. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's you. <sighs> Maybe it is me. Or the person who's listening. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, is it me? I don't know. Like, well, they're Could talking to me. Yeah, they are talking to you. So. That's true. <laughs> but you're like a conduit of the message. <laughs> yeah. Because mm -hmm. I honestly, I have to read back because I don't remember what they... Right. I never you're remember anything. Place. I don't remember mm -hmm. anything. People are like, do you remember that episode? I'm like, what? Yeah, what did I what, say? What did I say? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't, I don't know, know either. Yeah, is. I'm the same way. Well, we're, ch we're channelers. Mm -hmm. So, exactly. you know, it's not... We're not making this stuff up. No. I'm smart, but I ain't this smart. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. Okay, so are you ready to talk about her childhood? Yes, I am. Okay. And I, I think I just had one other note about that. And, and maybe this will go into the childhood too, but I can see suppression Yeah. in her chart. Mm -hmm. Because Saturn, the authority, the... The, the symbol that represents the father, the authority, it's in a position of power, just like Venus. It's in Capricorn in the 10th house, which mm -hmm. is ruled by Saturn. Mm -hmm. So it's in a double position of power, but it's squaring her ascendant, her personality. So there was a restrictive quality to her actually being the person that she wanted to be. Mm -hmm. It was hard for her to be herself. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that lines up perfectly with what I downloaded. Hmm. So, yeah, it's really interesting. She said that she, I asked her, could we talk about her childhood a little bit? And she said, well, I was quite the sass mouth as a child. <laughs> <laughs> I was the black sheep of the family, and I liked it that way. In fact, she would purposely do things to keep herself in that black sheep type of category. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that speaks volumes to what you just said about the suppression. Like mm. that's a, you know, you suppress something long enough and then it just comes, you know, roaring out of the cage, you yes. know? Um, and she said that she liked to stir things up. She said, I've always been that way ever since I was a child. And I think a lot of it was because I always felt like the outcast. Even though mommy and daddy went to great lengths to treat Elizabeth and I as equals. Mm -hmm. And almost in a like really weird way too. Like mm -hmm. they were twins almost. It comes off as if they were like, they were treated that way like they were twins. Hmm. I don't know. It just, that's what I see. Interesting. Her father was quoted as saying that Elizabeth was his pride, mm -hmm. but Margaret was his joy. Okay. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I see, I'm seeing them and they look, they're dressed alike. Oh, yeah. Oh, and no, they're that's like, how they look. You look at these old pictures. Yeah. And they look like, she looks like a smaller version of her older sister. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's really like, okay. <laughs> they look very similar to each other and they're dressed similar. Yeah, exactly. Which is why clothes. she, which is why she would break out. So because, they were twinning. Totally. Yeah, they were twinning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but I think that also pushed her to, to, break out and be more of an individual? Well, she's an Aries rising. Mm -hmm. And Aries is the sign that's ruled by Mars. 
the god of war. The rising sign is your outer shell. It's your personality. This is what you show to people you don't know in situations where you're uncomfortable, places where you're unfamiliar. If you ever feel threatened, you're showing your rising sign. Mm -hmm. So Elizabeth is a Capricorn rising, which is earth. It's cardinal earth, so it's leadership. Cardinal is lead. Mm Mm-hmm. But earth is very stoic. You can't see through the earth. Mm -hmm. Whereas Margaret is Aries, which is cardinal fire. Also leadership, but that fire energy is going to burn some people. Yeah. So she is not shy. She's going to say what she's going to say. She's going to put herself out there. She's going to be brash. Mm -hmm. She's going to be courageous. She's going to be aggressive. If need be. Yeah. And that's just who she was designed to be. Yeah. Big time. (laughs) (laughs) I love her. (laughs) I really do. She's one of my favorites. Mm, Tell me more. Okay. So she said, we had the same everything. (laughs) Mm. She said, but I think a part of me resented that. I wanted to be an individual, like I just said. Uh, I didn't want to be a twin Mm. when I was not a twin. I think they went overboard with it, but I appreciate the sentiment. But it didn't work anyways. I never quite lived up to Elizabeth's worth or standards. Mm. So when you look at their two charts together, Elizabeth's son, Mm -hmm. which is the planet that represents her identity, is in Margaret's first house, which is the house of personality. Okay. So when somebody's son lands in your first house, that's like, it can feel one of two ways, it, you know, because everything's light and shadow. Mm-hmm. It can feel like being on a beach on a perfect sunny day and you're just soaking up that warmth and it's like, oh, the sun feels so great. It can also feel like being in the middle of, the, of a desert mm. with no water, no shade. And so, in addition to Elizabeth's son being in Margaret's first house, so is her Chiron, which is the wound and the self and the the ancient wisdom that is unlocked through healing that wound. But the wound in Margaret's first house, you know, that I would look at that as, and Margaret was actually born with Chiron in the first house. So Margaret automatically has a wound to her Mm self-confidence, though she also has ancient wisdom there as well, Mm -hmm. which is unlocked through healing that wound. But her sister's Chiron landing in her first house as well also brings about some insecurities. Mm. In addition to that, Chiron is at the exact same degree in a different sign, but connecting to Margaret's son. They're both at 28 degrees, the Chiron's in Aries, Margaret's son is in Leo. Mm -hmm. So that brings up a wound to identity, to the battery that's powering her human ship. Wow. Yeah. Goodness gracious. That's a heavy, that's a heavy load to carry, especially when your sister is the queen. Exactly. And that's, I mean, it just shows up so clearly right here. And they say queen of England, but she's really queen of the world, honestly. Because totally. oh, if yeah. you think about... No, she's the boss. Yeah. She's the top dog. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, in addition to that, <laughs> you know, Elizabeth has one, two, three, four, five planets in Princess Margaret's 12th house. Ooh. The 12th house is the house of the unconscious. Mm. So. Wow. There there probably wasn't a moment that went by in Margaret's life where she wasn't thinking about her sister Mm -hmm. and what she would say or do or this memory or that memory. She's just in there. Oh, my God. Poor thing. Hmm. But, you know, I feel like um, I'm hearing her say Elizabeth knew that. And so Elizabeth would be really tender with her sister and that's that's the that's the flip side Mm -hmm. of so when planets you know just like i was talking about planets in the first house can be a perfect sunny day or Mm -hmm. the desert planets in the 12th house though the shadow side 
is, you know, somebody haunts you. They, they know what goes on in your mind mm -hmm. and they know how to pick at you. They know how to push your buttons. But on the lighter side, they see clearly what's going on in your unconscious and they can be there to support you and be compassionate and empathetic. And I imagine that that's how Elizabeth was with Margaret. Like, I, I feel what you're going through, you yeah. know? So, yeah. And that's what she's saying. She's saying she, Elizabeth knew. Mm -hmm. And so she was always t extra tender mm -hmm. with her, even yes. when she was acting out mm -hmm. she would still she'd be patient with be her. patient with mm -hmm. her because she understood that that burden because mm -hmm. she was carrying a burden totally you know they she both, didn't really want <laughs> exactly. that that charge in life yeah. you know that was forced on her exactly yeah so you know they both had mm -hmm. their burdens that they were carrying. Absolutely. Absolutely. The yeah. crown is heavy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. And it's interesting because Elizabeth had a wound to her self-confidence mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. But her wound is in the fourth house, which is the house of home, mm -hmm. which represents your roots your upbringing, your mm -hmm. childhood, your ancestors. It's like the lineage, you know, she had to carry that burden. That's a hell of a burden. Yeah. I don't want to carry that. Mm. Crown off to her crown. So <laughs> <laughs> my crown is a little different. Yes. <laughs> okay. Wow. That's really, that's deep. Mm. Okay. So I also, I asked her about her and Elizabeth's relationship growing up. Mm-hmm. And then that's when she showed me the two of them walking arm in arm. And it looks like they're just kind of walking like on a, on a, on a gravel. I don't know where they were, but they both have on like these like plaid outfits or uniforms. Mm -hmm. They were like greenish in color. And it looked like they're dressed exactly alike. Like they, everything was alike. And they've, and they're probably about, I think they were like eight years old. And then, then she said, yes, eight years old. She said, yeah, they were eight. So she was eight. And then uh, uh, Elizabeth she, she was, was like, I think she was eight. And, and Elizabeth, Elizabeth was older. 12. Yeah. It was, yeah, yeah. A little older than her. Yeah. They were um, like four years apart. Okay. So um, they're walking and they're talking and laughing. And then Margaret says she was my best friend. Hmm. So they were, they were very, very close, mm -hmm. very much so best friends. And she says, and they were inseparable. Hmm. Okay. She said, we absolutely adored one another. And it was nice to, ha to have a live-in best friend. Hmm. Um, she said, we were completely different. I kept her laughing all the time. <laughs> and we would argue like <laughs> cats and dogs, of course, <laughs> sisters, right? <laughs> but eventually we'd start laughing again, just like nothing ever happened. And we were indeed sisters with an inseparable bond, no matter what. She said, but I, I struggled always. Hmm. Um, because there was just this, this underlining, I don't even feel like it was jealousy. It was more of, um, I, I think what you just said about Elizabeth having five planets in her 12th house, 12th house which mm -hmm. is the unconscious. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. that's what it was. Mm. It doesn't feel like jealousy. Yeah. It feels like... I can't get away from you. Yeah, exactly. That's it. She lives in her mind. I can't get away from you, and I can't really live the life I want to live mm -hmm. without being scrutinized for it, mm -hmm. but I can't have the crown either, mm -hmm. so what the fuck? Exactly. That's the energy that I'm getting. Like, what the fuck? Like, I just let me go and mm -hmm. do whatever I want, but I can't mm -mm. because of because of the crown, the exactly. throne, you know? Because of, yes. Yeah. But she was born into. Mm -hmm. But you can see the fun and the laughter. Elizabeth's Venus is one of those planets that's mm -hmm. in the twelfth house, and Venus is the is Lady Luck, mm -hmm. the goddess of love and beauty, the planet of relationships. It it was at thirteen degrees in Pisces, which is the sign of the unconscious mm. when Elizabeth was born. Uh, so that makes her someone who's very compassionate mm -hmm. and, and giving maybe gives too much mm. in her close personal relationships, but her Venus was in direct alignment with Margaret's Jupiter. Mm. 
which is the planet of luck and expansion. It's the planet of laughter, of mm. buoyancy. Mm -hmm. Margaret's was at 11 degrees in Cancer in the fourth house, uh, which is the sign and the house of home and roots. So that would indicate that she was born into luck mm -hmm. and abundance and through the relationship with her sister brought luck to her sister and her sister brought luck to her and there was laughter and levity in their childhood, in their unconscious with each other and in their life together. Beautiful. Hmm. That's awesome. I love that. I love that they're that they were there were so close and mm -hmm. they had that great relationship because that could easily have gone another way. Yes. Um, even though there were times where it did go another way, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure. But they always managed to pull it back together. And she says that. She says, Elizabeth always kept it together. I struggled. I think I was just born that way. <laughs> I'm laughing because you're like, Yes, reading her yes, chart, yeah. and yes. she literally was just born that way, yes. you know? <laughs> exactly. Um, and she said, we were all born with some kind of psychosis or mental mishap. Hmm. We showed up in different ways as they do in families. So she's just saying, this was me, this was her, mm -hmm. and this is how we came into this world. And that's just, that happens in families, Exactly. Right? That's the complexity of it. You it know? is. It's like... You there's joy, there's laughter, there's fun, but then there's also the pain that comes on the other side. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Hmm. Um, and then she said things did start to change between them. Things started to change between us when it started to become apparent that Elizabeth would be queen. Hmm. And I couldn't understand that because I felt that I was just as qualified for the job. Mm -hmm. I've always felt that way. Mm -hmm. I still feel that way now. Well, I, I think we probably said this on, on the last episode, but Margaret was born with the sun in Leo. Mm -hmm. And Leo is symbolized by the lion, the queen of the jungle. Yeah. Uh, you know, but Elizabeth was born with the moon in Leo. So they both have that regal quality uh, of of the the Leo energy. Uh, it, it's it's interesting, you know. Their mother uh, was also a Leo, mm. so the Queen Mother had that Queen energy. Helena Bonham Carter, who plays oh right, okay, who played uh, uh, Margaret mm -hmm. in in The Crown. She's a Leo Moon, mm. so you know it's it's that natural air yeah. of like I don't have to do anything. I just walk into a room and people see me. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I it's like. The sun, you know when it's out, you know when it's up, mm -hmm. and that's it. That's it. So, you know, I, the sun's not saying, hey, look at me. Mm -hmm. It's just there. And you're like, oh, I feel that warmth. I, I see the light. Absolutely. And that's the quality that she had. So, of course, like, she's like, I could have been the queen. I could do that job. Exactly. And there were, there were times when she... I mean, she didn't act as queen, but there was times that she stepped in and killed it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Totally. <laughs> like really did a great job at it. Totally. I mean, which is natural. They come from that. So, of course, you know, she'll be able to pull that off. Well, it's it's that queen energy mm -hmm. that she has mm -hmm. of being a Leo son. Yeah. And the courage with the Aries rising, her Mars, which is the planet that rules Aries, is also in contact with uh, her son, which mm -hmm. makes her even more courageous. That's why she could just get up in front of a group of people and have them laughing, have them, you know, enjoying her presence. Yeah. Her moon was also in the fifth house, which is associated with the fifth sign, which is Leo. Mm -hmm. So she was also like a Leo moon as well. Mm. Even though it wasn't in Leo, it was in Cancer, mm -hmm. but it still has that energy. Interesting. Of, yeah. Okay. Being the center of attention. Mm. Okay. Very interesting. And she said that there were certain things that she felt she could get done more smoothly and more democratically than Elizabeth did. Mm. And this reminds me of when we did Bobby... And Jack. And Jack. Mm -hmm. Remember how, the Kennedys. how 
how Bobby was saying similar things. Mm -hmm. Like he would have been able to kind of, um, I don't want to use the word slither his way in, but he he had a way of being able to tackle certain things Mm -hmm. without being as in your face as Jack was. Mm -hmm. And he said sometimes he just didn't know how to navigate in certain situations. That kind of reminds me of what she's, Hmm. saying here. Mm -hmm. And then she says that Elizabeth is very by the book, which I guess in hindsight is better fitting for the role of queen. However, I was quite creative and witty with the way in which I would go about getting certain things done. Hmm. I feel like she felt like she made it look better. (laughs) No more style. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's part of, I think, her Venus in Libra, you know, which is grace it's beauty, it's mm-hmm. style, it's fairness, it's charm. Mm-hmm. You know, she is a very charming person, you know. So I think that's a big part of, of what she's talking about here. I think that's what it comes from astrologically. Yeah. And so that brought me to ask her, was there any sibling rivalry between mm-hmm. her and Queen Elizabeth? And then she lights up another cigarette. Because remember, <laughs> she's chain smoking <laughs> while she's talking to me. Yeah. She said, I wouldn't call it rivalry. She had things that I didn't have, and I wanted the things that she had not exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't want her husband. She said, oh, God, no. (laughs) (laughs) I did not want her husband. I don't want her children. Mm -hmm. She said, I did want the crown Mm -hmm. because there's only one, but Mm -hmm. it wasn't. It wasn't her her crown to be had. It is the crown. Mm. And I just felt, um, I felt just as worthy to wear that crown, but I never had the things that she was able to have in her life. And that hurt me deeply. Mm. Hmm. And it wasn't because I didn't want her to have them. It's just that I wanted them too. Mm Mm-hmm. And she said that she was very happy for her sister. She said, I love my sister, but jealousy and depression makes you do very strange things. Mm. I feel like she's calling it jealousy because she doesn't have another word for it, but Mm -hmm. I'm not picking up on jealousy. What are you thinking it is? I'm what you said and her subconscious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? Yes. If you're constantly thinking and thinking, you're just ruminating and going over and over mm-hmm. and over again. And over, and that can make you angry. And it can appear as jealousy when really it's just cosmically <laughs> that's exactly. what's going on. And if you're not aware of that, then you don't know how to go in and deprogram it and turn it into something else. So then it just kind of eats away and eats away and eats away at you, which is basically what happened to her. Yes. And her physical body. Yeah, you know, Margaret... She has a lot of planets in positions of power. Uh, The sun's in the sign that it rules. Venus is in the sign in house that it rules. Saturn is in the sign in the house that it rules. The moon is in the sign that it rules. And Mercury, which is the planet that rules the conscious mind, how you think, how you communicate, was also in the sign and the house that it rules in Virgo. So Virgo is this like overactive mental position. If you're born with Mercury in Virgo in the sixth house, which is associated with the sixth sign, which is Virgo, like she had a very clear eye for detail, Mm -hmm. very critical, very analytical, uh, wanting efficiency. Uh, But at 24 degrees in Virgo, it was in alignment with two of Elizabeth's planets, Saturn, the authority, the planet of restriction, and Uranus, the planet of rebellion. Mm -hmm. So it's like at once Elizabeth is restricting Margaret's mind, but also shaking it Mm. at the same time. Mm. And so, yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That sounds like, a mental prison. Yeah. I mean, I can see that. Mm-hmm. So it's, and it's very confusing. I just, I have to imagine that, you know, Margaret is constantly thinking about Elizabeth and 
making choices either in rebellion to Elizabeth or in submission to Elizabeth. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's just, it's, it really is being a prisoner. Mm-hmm. Either you want to escape and kill the guard, mm-hmm. or you're constantly being told what to do, you and you submit. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, then she goes on to say, she said, also insecurity over drinking and smoking more than I'm eating can absolutely trigger an already fragile mind, mm-hmm. right? The emotions more so than the mind. Um, and then she just starts to kind of like trail off a bit. Well, her emotions were connected to her mind mm-hmm. because her moon is at 25 degrees in Cancer, which is the most emotional sign. It's the sign that's ruled by the moon. Mm-hmm. And her Mercury is at 24 degrees in Virgo. So her mental capacity was being influenced by what she was feeling. Mm -hmm. And then the moon being in the fifth house, like those feelings can be somewhat focused on the self. Mm. And yeah, so if if her emotions weren't getting satisfied, then she's beating herself up mentally or maybe saying things that are hurtful to other people that she's close to. Yeah. Especially if she's drinking Mm -hmm. and not balancing everything out. And so then she just kind of started like trailing off Mm -hmm. like she was remembering something or or like relieving, reliving something. And then she goes on to say, and, and, and mind you, she's one of the more verbal ones because usually it's not this much dialogue Mm -hmm. you know usually it's more just telepathy kind of but she is like chatting with you chatty quite you know very very chatty Mm -hmm. Um, but what she said was um I, i what i couldn't figure out in my mind and and couldn't settle in my heart well you just said that okay Mm -hmm. (laughs) broke my body down Mm -hmm. eventually and she said, do you know what it feels like to never be fulfilled and then to have the one thing that does bring you fulfillment go away and disappear? And she said she's talking about, um, I don't know which lover she is, but she said she's talking about her beloved husband. Hmm. Everything I wanted, it was really difficult for me to attain. And that literally drove me mad. And I tried to fit it to fit in, to get along with everyone and to go along with everything. I really, really tried, but it was just too damn unfair. Hmm. And she says she couldn't understand why her sister got everything that she wanted without barely lifting a finger or trying. And here I was running around in circles, driving myself mad to find true love, to hold on to it, to bear children to have a meaningful purpose in life, to have my own identity outside of being the sister of Queen Elizabeth. Wow. So, you know, Margaret was born with the North Node, which we know is the soul's purpose in Aries, Mm -hmm. in the first house, which is associated with the first sign, which is Aries. She was meant to do what she wanted to do. Mm. But she spent, I think, a good portion of her life trying to please other people. And as a result, feeling frustrated. I mean, that's like what she's saying right there. Yeah. She wanted to do what she wanted to do. She couldn't have the crown. And she wanted to just live her life. And everything that she tried to go and do just kind of, it was just like stops, 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 stops each and every time. And that sucks. Yeah. That sucks. It's like every time she wanted to do something, she was restricted. Yeah. And it's like she had to push past, like she had maybe too much loyalty to her sister Mm -hmm. and her family. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, because she, I mean, there's been times in history and their family when people just stepped away. Mm Mm-hmm. But I think that she loved her family so much. That was the big conflict. She didn't want to. She didn't want to leave the castle or leave her family. But there was. She was torn. Like mm-hmm. I want to live my life, mm-hmm. but in order to really live, I have to totally disconnect from them, and I don't want to do that. Hmm. Prison. Yeah. Yeah. 
Pluto's the god of death. It's the most willful planet. And when Elizabeth was born, it was at 12 degrees in Cancer, mm -hmm. which is cardinal water. As we said earlier, when Princess Margaret was born, Venus, the planet of relationships in the senses, was at 12 degrees in Libra, which is cardinal air. This indicates a bond, a bond between these two people that cannot be broken, mm -hmm. but it's very painful. Mm -hmm. there's, there's, trans there's a transformation that's occurring here that must occur, but it doesn't feel good. Yeah. Well, you do. I mean, we call it um, cutting cords. I mean, obviously, she probably didn't know about that, right? Mm -hmm. But um, if you are feeling like you are bonded to someone and it feels like a bond that you can't break, all that is is an agreement. And mm -hmm. agreements are made to be broken. Mm -hmm. You know, contracts can be broken. Yes. Soul contracts can be broken as well. Will you ever be able to fully disconnect spiritually no mm -hmm. but you can disconnect from the story that i'm tied to this person and i can never be free you can disconnect from that because mm -hmm. that is that's also a cord of attachment i'm attached to the story that mm -hmm. i can't go i can't leave so even though you may not be able because there's some soul connections that can't be broken no matter what you do but what I try to tell people is disconnect from the toxic attachment. So what would you tell Margaret to do? If, we, if, if you knew Margaret, you know, 50 years ago, Yeah. how would you counsel her? First of all, I would help her start releasing the need to have that thing. And I would help her get in alignment with what she truly, truly wants. She thinks that she wants the crown, mm -hmm. but really what she wants is to be seen. Re well, really what she wants is her own sovereignty. She wants her own sovereignty and she wants to be herself. She wants to be seen as herself and not ridiculed for it and not, yes. you know, cast off to the side because she doesn't fit into the mold. And that's a hundred percent correct because, you know, the North node in the first house in Aries, that's all about the self. Yeah. Yeah. And authenticity. Mm -hmm. Freedom. And she wasn't able to be authentic. Yeah. She wants freedom. Yes. That's really, really, really what she wants. And mm. she looked at her sister's life as, well, she gets everything that she wants. That must be freedom. Mm -hmm. But no, she, really she wasn't it. free either. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? <laughs> she wasn't free. Yeah. So I would help her connect with the feeling of freedom first because mm -hmm. she's so wound up and tied up. And like I, when I see her, she reminds me of like the Eight of Swords card in the tarot deck. What's that? Where you're surrounded by all of these swords and you have on a blindfold and your hands are lightly tied, which with what looks like toilet paper to mm -hmm, me. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to just break take free. break free. Mm -hmm. And the way the swords are lined up, you can literally just walk through the swords or you could kick them all down and just walk out. Like mm -hmm. it's a, it's a self-imposed prison. Mm -hmm. So I would help her break free of that self-imposed prison because freedom is the goal. Mm -hmm. But you have to feel free on an emotional level first before you can actually experience the freedom. Mm. And she needs to disconnect from what she thinks freedom is and connect to her own sense of freedom. Mm. That's something that has to happen internally. And then you're able to start creating a free life. Like I'm, I'm, I'm certain that she would have been able to walk. If walking away from her family is what needed to happen, mm -hmm. she would have been able to do that. Yeah. But she's so dependent on them. She's so dependent on them, you know? Mm -hmm. I think that's the... Well, you're dependent when you feel, when you're in bondage, mm -hmm. right? When you're in bondage, you it's a codependency there, right? That's part of the, the yeah. codependent trait, right? I can't leave because I'm tied to this or... Even more so, what's going to happen if I do leave? Mm -hmm. The fear of the unknown, right? Yes. So releasing the fear of what would happen if I let them go and just being able to embrace freedom. Freedom means not being in bondage anymore. Freedom yeah. means disconnecting from the things that make you feel bound, right? 
if you can start to feel free, what happens is naturally things just start falling away. People start falling away. You find a a way out of the jail, right? Mm-hmm. The door is just w- wide open and you're like, shit, I could just walk out. Mm-hmm. Or I could stay here and wait until they note until they notice and close them again, right? Yeah. So things once you connect with the feeling of something, that's when you manifest whatever you mm-hmm. want, mm-hmm. you know. But as long as you still feel bound, you still feel like I'm, I I can't go, then you won't be able to. Your the doors are gonna have gonna grow like ten different bolts on them, <laughs> you know, ten different new locks. Mm. So I feel like if she would have been able to connect with that freedom internally and start creating what freedom looks like in her visualizations, then she would have been able to create a way out, you know. Yeah. And who's to say, maybe leaving the castle wasn't the answer, right? But maybe just feeling free was. Mm-hmm. I could still be here, but I feel free. I don't feel bound to anything. Does that make sense? Yes. She would have to change her whole attitude in terms of the crown and what it means Absolutely. to her. She'd have to disconnect from the idea of the crown meaning freedom. Yeah. Because in her mind, she says, Elizabeth got everything she wanted mm-hmm. because she was queen. Mm-hmm. So if I was queen, I'd get everything that I she's want. She's connecting. She's associating freedom to an object instead of just experiencing freedom Hmm. in herself. I've heard prisoners say the way they were released from the physical prison is that every day they would just imagine and they would just feel free. They would just visualize themselves being free. They kept visualizing that. They never let it go. And pretty soon they started to feel free even behind bars. And then one day... Something happened. They were gone. They were and they're out. released. Yeah. Something happened. Mm-hmm. So it's possible. It's attracting that frequency. It's manifestation 101. Mm. A law of attraction 101. Mm-hmm. Law of assumption. All of that stuff. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that's how I would work with. I love it. With Miss Princess Margaret. I love it. Well, I think this is a good place to. Uh, to conclude this episode and we'll get back at it for more Margaret. More Margaret. Because we're getting deeper. More. We're getting yeah, deeper more. and deeper and I love it. And I feel like you made just such a great point in terms of the law of attraction and how to reframe the mind mm-hmm. and how you'd work with Margaret. And I just think it's brilliant. So thank you, Shara. Thank you for for <laughs> pointing out those five planets in her unconscious mind because that's, That's huge. I think that's a big reason why she was drinking so much. Yeah. Because the 12th house is is the house that represents drugs and alcohol. Mm -hmm. So she was trying to escape Mm. her sister in in her head all day long. Yeah. So she is drinking to not have to think about her sister. Yeah, but, but... But then, like, igniting, I mean, think about alcohol, right? You can light things on fire with it. It's flammable. <laughs> yeah, So exactly. now you're you're drinking to drown these feelings and emotions and thoughts. And but now you're intense. just setting your ass on fire. Exactly. Every time she does something or something doesn't work out for mm-hmm. you, you lose your shit. You're on fire. Exactly. So it doesn't, people. It's not the alcohol answer. Alcohol is not the answer. It's not the answer. Drink when you're happy. Yeah. Not when you're sad. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Not the answer. <laughs> it's not the answer. No. Clean something. Go for a long hike if you're upset or yeah. sad. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. I would have loved Margaret to to get involved in like combat or something yeah. like uh, dueling. Physical, you know, you know they where she could like lot, get right? into her body and just mm-hmm. you know, like I know on the show on the Crown, like they show her riding horses and mm-hmm. stuff. Like I think that's a good thing for her. Is just like moving, moving, like. Just getting in her body yeah. and, and being strong. Yeah. That's how she could claim her identity. Mm-hmm. So, all right, Shara, this is awesome. All thank right, Thank you Scott. so much. Thank you, Princess Margaret. Yes, thank you. And thank you to our listeners. Yes, we'll see indeed. you. We'll see you next time. I can't wait. You've been listening to The Uncharted Territories, where we see the unseen in the world of matter. If you would like to support the podcast, subscribe. 
We've talked a lot about the subconscious mind and the importance of healing our wounds from the past. As an energy healer and a certified hypnotherapist, I help people understand how the mind works so they can harness the energy of the subconscious and tap into their inner power and make those positive long-term changes in their lives. If you're ready to make that change, you can book a session with me by connecting at opendoorhypnosis.com. I look forward to working with you. If you'd like to learn more about who you are, where you come from, why you're here, and what you're meant to do with your life, contact me, Scott Tajarian, at theweeklytransit.com, and we will take a close, detailed look at your astrological code. My purpose is to help you understand who you are so you can accept, appreciate, and love the divine, unique miracle that is you.